you know there were 2.1 million people in the United States incarcerated right now? I know, a big number, right? Now let me dig a little deeper into that fact. Out of 2.1 million, about 40% of those people are African American. And African Americans only hold about 14% of the population. Now about 58% of them are white and they hold 75% of the population. When you look at those numbers, are they surprising to you at all? I know you're probably thinking, why should I care about those numbers? Now, I believe you should care because it shows how our justice system has been running since imprisonment started in 1891. If we go back in time and look at those same numbers, 95% of the people in prison were African Americans. And that should make you wonder, were prisons created for African Americans after the 13th Amendment was created to try to keep blacks in chains? with slavery now being illegal, and the media has had a hand with showing African Americans not in a good light with the facts or even the narrative not being true. And watching this film, I want you to ask yourself a couple of questions. Do you believe every African American has to be a criminal? How would you feel about the imprisonment education provided in every prison around the United States? What changed what would change look like in prison systems for society? I want you to think of these questions because we are going to be throwing a lot of topics at you, such as police brutality, recidivism, and even rehabilitation. And I want you to start thinking of change because if prison education was allowed around the United States, what, what would that look like? Prison education has given prisoners an opportunity to be great and give them a chance to be more successful when they get released from prison. Education has given them tools to manage risks and social control in the interests of general public. The education promotes transformative learning such as critical thinking, what is not abstract, most importantly in everyday lives. Research shows that in other prisons, students participate in education to develop a new sense of self to become a better person and actually want to have a career after incarceration. Most people are successful and now tell their stories to people. Now I would like to get into recidivism. Recidivism is when a person who's recently left prison and ends up right back in there for convicting some sort of crime. This usually happens to a lot of people who have recently been incarcerated. This issue is complex. For example, a man who just got released from prison maybe a year ago starts to work but can't do as much or get paid less, even maybe treated wrongly because of his past for being a convicted felon. Usually some people may just give up, so he quits his job and starts to get back into the wrong crowd again, starts to sell drugs or even do whatever he can to make money, and ends up incarcerated again. Reasons of recidivism include the lack of socialization, an ability to reintegrate into society after returning from prison, the most effective, associ the most effective is association with other criminals. These reasons usually tend to keep people going back into prison and it's a repeating cycle. Police brutality is the excessive and unwarranted use of force by law enforcement against an individual or group. This group is black and brown people. Yes, I'm sticking to that because history shows that constant racism and discrimination is given to this group of people dating all the way back to slavery. Prison is just a legalized form of slavery that we can't get out of. The group of people that put these laws into place made it so that we feel we cannot do anything. Trayvon Martin, George Floyd, Dante Wright, Breonna Taylor, Freddie Gray, and the list goes on and on. Of black and brown people, that have been publicly killed by the police. These are just names we know because of the media. Have you ever thought about what happens to black and brown people behind bars? People stuck in cages like animals that are not treated like human beings? Have you ever thought about the cries for help we as a society cannot hear because they're trapped behind cages? Police play a big role in the mass incarceration numbers in the US. None of this is a secret. They just beat us down so mentally we feel as though there's nothing we can do. There's not much I can say. To, the truth is right in front of you. You just have to open your eyes and do something about it. Hello? Hello, how you doing? All right, uh, state your name. My name is Mario Roth. Okay, so the first question is, how is being in prison affecting your mental health? Well, being in prison is affecting my mental health tremendously. I mean, it's, Every day. I mean, you never know what you're going to deal with. You never know what's going to happen. So it's like it's a constant, it's a constant battle with mental health here. And it's just, it's real, it's real, it's real tough on the mental health. So how is 
just like the living conditions and stuff like that. Poor. Sales is dirty. The food is disgusting. The, the health care, everything is just terrible about this place. I mean, get everything last. So, I mean, the living conditions is terrible. Roaches everywhere in here. Mice, birds flying all around. In the mess hall, we eat food at. It's, it's just terrible. I won't recommend it to anybody. Alright, so, Dad, do you experience, like, racism or anything like that? Every day. It's segregated in here. Black people be with the black people, the Puerto Ricans be with the Puerto Ricans, the whites with the whites. Gang activity going on in here. Mental separation. All day. Everybody stick to their own kind here. It does me a race, race thing going on in here. So, yes, I experience it every day. Okay, so, like, would you want to be a part of a prison education system? I would definitely want to be a part of the prison education system, and I say that because I wouldn't want to see anybody, as far as the youth coming here, I would basically, I think it would know, help educate them, let them know what they get themselves into before they make decisions, they can damage their lives for the rest of their lives, so I definitely would want to be a part of that, a program like that. Okay. What's your name and age? Deshaun Morris, 41 years old. Okay, how did prison affect your mental health? How did prison affect my mental health? Well, for starters, uh, I think when you put anyone in a room for hours and hours of time of the day, 23 hours a day, I think it impacts people differently. Um, myself, I've always been a loner. I've always been a, <clears throat> a person who prefers solitude over crowds anyway. So I wouldn't say it affected me uh, in the worst way like I've seen it other people. Some people are extrovert, so they need to be out amongst people. So I don't think that I got the full impact of being locked in a cell, you know, 23 hours a day, like most people. Um, I actually found it to be peaceful in many, in many cases for myself, just wanting to be alone and, <clears throat> you know, losing myself in my thoughts. Uh, so it was actually beneficial for me. Okay. Did you and, when, and when I say beneficial, I don't mean beneficial. I mean, beneficial as far as my state of mind. You know, I, I get like high anxiety being around a lot of people. So being in a cell, you know, was kind of beneficial for me. Okay. Um, did your community play a part of you being in and out of jail? Absolutely. 100%. I don't think it's the end all be all. Uh, there's many people who've come from the inner cities, the ghetto slums that have found ways to escape incarceration. But I wouldn't use those cases as the large majority. Um, for the majority of people, especially to come from the ghetto, um, it definitely plays a part because just the way of survival in the ghetto often leads to jail. You know, the, just the day-to-day -day way to survive often is attached to something criminal. And it's, you know, we like to say, you know, it's all a trap. It's all set up for you to get back and forth into jail. So when there's not many opportunities, when there's not many outlook, outlets and resources, and you're confined inside of a ghetto, people are gonna find a way to make a way. And oftentimes that leads to jail. Did moving away from that community help with your recidivism? Absolutely. Um, that's, in my opinion, I don't think moving will stop a person from going back to jail, but I think it, it decreases the, 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 the possibilities. I mean, when you live in an environment where there's not much hope, um, you're going to succumb to a lot of the, the survival ways to live day to day. Now, by moving out of that environment, for me, what it did was it just got me away from the, the day to day people that I was around. It got me away from um, just that survival mode because a person can move and just move into another ghetto. They can move into another situation that's similar to what they left. So the real question is, where are you moving to?